Hi, today we will be driving those two LEDs together with interrupts at different time rates. And for one LED we will use uh, Cystic Peripheral and for the second one we will be using Timer Counter Zero. So let's hop in into the project and see the files. So first of all what we got in the ASF added to the project Mm, I got the driver for the timer counter and also added the interrupt manager. Going into the main file. Uh, first of all, I declared a timer zero instance. It's just a pointer to the uh, address of the peripheral. Going to the main, first we got uh, system clock initialization. Next on we uh, configure the Cystic and uh, we configure it uh, to make an interrupt every one millisecond. So taking a look at our clock for the board in the conf clock, uh, it is set to the default 84 megahertz. So going back, we can see 84,000 minus one. Uh, it will do um, exactly every one millisecond and interrupt. After that, we make sure we have enabled the uh, interrupt with some uh, priority setup. So uh, priority seven is uh, pretty much the Thing you want to use in a user application. Next on we got uh, the clocks for the GPIO, for the, uh, I think it was the TX LED and the second one is just a regular LED, LED, and those two pins for this. Uh, okay, so now the question is uh, where do we got the interrupt for the cystic going on. It's right here. We got to uh, declare a function with this name and every one millisecond uh, it will be done. So uh, to know the name of the function we can go to the file ex exceptions.c and right here we got uh, some declarations for the for those functions and uh, as you see um, they are by default declared as uh, weak to a function called uh, dummy handler so uh, this uh, does nothing right here and if we uh, declare a function with this name somewhere in our own files uh, that it doesn't have the weak uh, before it. Uh, this function will be taking place instead of the dummy handler. So we got it enabled, declared right here, so it will execute this part of the code. Okay, so what we got? So we have a counter which we increment uh, every time we are in the cystic handler and if it's uh, above uh, this value so this will be something like uh, one and three second every time it's uh, done it's uh, toggling the led and there's also a flag changing to know if it's on or off okay so that's for the cystic and now going to the timer zero. So I made a function that uh, configures the uh, timer and it's right here. So first of all, we enable the peripheral clock for the TC zero. Next on, uh, make sure to make the write protect uh, disabled so you can configure registers. Next on you'll uh, init the uh, timer, so the structure, the pointer to the address, 
actually uh, the channel of the timer so in this case zero and the configuration for the timer so i made it uh, to count from zero to a value that i write to the uh, rc uh, register and the clock for the timer is set to clock free uh, now what's the clock free let's take a look at the data sheet okay so uh, we are in the section of the timers and uh, this is the uh, register used for uh, configuring the mode so if we want to use just like in our project uh, timer clock free it means it takes the main clock divided by 32 for counting uh, the next values so every step is taken from here you can change this uh, value even lower or uh, even uh, take it like the half of the main clock okay so the other flags is the uh, use the wave uh, calculation uh, mode and also we use the uh, RC compare and uh, after we compare it we clear the counter next on we write to the RC register the value we want to, we want to use uh, it should be something like this for one millisecond minus one because we always start from the zero minus Okay, so it will uh, be overflowing, I mean, uh, getting an interrupt from the compare every one millisecond, just like the sys tick. Okay, next one we enable the interrupt for the compare of the RC register value. Next on the same as in the sys tick, uh, we set a priority, I set it uh, one uh, level uh, lower uh, so the cystic has a higher priority and, and also we enable the interrupt for the timer counter zero and after this we have to start the timer so the timer uh, instance the channel zero okay and now going to the handler of the interrupt I got it declared right here and uh, uh, there's one thing you got to always do when in the interrupt you have to uh, simply read the status of the uh, timer and this is done because you need to uh, clear the flags for the interrupts if you don't do this step uh, it will be always an interrupt. So although the timer didn't do any interrupts, it will be always an interrupt. So make sure to always read the flags so it clears them. And uh, the rest is just the same as in the cystic handler, just different uh, values. So the tick reload is it different, one second, uh, the tick uh, counter uh, value, I mean the variable, also different for the uh, timer counter and the flags. And the most important, the LED is different, <laughs> different pin. Okay, so now uh, let's uh, change the timing. So let's uh, go to this value and let's uh, blink the LED like 100 millisecond and the assist click LED just something like 300 millisecond okay so it build it now reset in the board okay and now writing it. OK. 
Okay. And now let's take a look at the board. So the LEDs are bl blinking just uh, as we uh, intended to, and uh, they are working independently. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one.